This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. Russia has relinquished its final foothold in a major city in southern Ukraine, clearing the way for victorious Ukrainian forces to reclaim the country's only right. And added good climate policy was good economic policy. A former security guard at the British Embassy in Berlin has admitted spying for Russia and faces up to 14 years in prison. Prosecutors say he gave Russia's military attaché in Berlin information, including details of the activities, identities, addresses, and phone numbers of British civil servants. They say he was motivated by a hatred of Britain and was angry that the embassy flew the rainbow flag in support of the LGBTQ plus community. Follow us on the VOA mobile app. This is VOA News. Ethiopia's lead negotiator in ongoing peace talks is asserting 70% of the country's northern Tigray region is now under military control and aid deliveries have resumed to the area. National Security Advisor Red Wayne Hussein tweeted the info on Friday as the talks continued in neighboring Kenya. The United States is applying pressure on Ethiopia's government to swiftly deliver aid and basic services to the long cut-off region of more than 5 million people. A powerful, shallow underwater earthquake has struck near Tonga in the southern Pacific, prompting authorities to issue and then lift a tsunami advisory. The sound of a tsunami warning siren as the U.S. Geological Survey says the magnitude 7.3 quake was centered east-southeast of Tonga. It predicted strong shaking but said the probability of serious damage or casualties was small. The U.S. tsunami warning system issued and later lifted a tsunami advisory. A judge in Scotland says a man who has spent almost a year fighting extradition to the U.S. is Nicholas Rossi, a fugitive alleged to have faked his own death to escape rape allegations. AP correspondent Charles De La Haye reports. An era of political instability in elections in Israel with his partners on the far right. Friday's decision by President Isaac Herzog was announced by his office after he consulted with leaders of all the parties elected to parliament in last week's general election. Police in Nigeria say 12 people have been killed in the north central area when a gasoline tanker exploded after a crash along a major road. Police said Friday the tanker, quote, crushed cars on the way before it exploded Thursday night. And all the victims were burnt to death. Find more at voanews.com. I'm Joe Ramsey. Kurt Harter, the VOA News, Alice Arba, Ethiopia. Your two Africans tonight on The Voice of America, I'm the Aegis, Mugig in Washington. Defense ministers from Cameroon and the Central African Republic say they are deploying a joint force for their common border after at least 80 people were taken hostage over the past three months. The two ministers blame rebels fleeing military crackdowns in the car for increased crime on the border. Okirwin Kindeka reports from Yaoundé. Defense ministers from Cameroon and the Central African Republic CAR say ongoing rebel attacks, rampant theft and abduction for ransom add up to a humble situation for civilians on their country's common border. Several impossible for him to pay a ransom of about $20,000 to free himself, his wife and daughter. Adamu spoke on Cameroon State Broadcaster CRTV on Friday. He said three people sustained injuries in a crossfire between Cameroon government troops and rebels. The CAR said the rebels are escaping on relenting attacks on their hideouts by troops of the United Nations peacekeeping force in the country known as MINUSCA. General Aga Robinson is one of the Cameroonian commanders fighting rebels in fashion along the central Afghan state's northern border. 
as you get used. He says each time Cameroon deploys troops on its side of the port, rebels escape with hostages to the CAR side. He says Cameroon and CAR have agreed to carry out joint military operations to free several dozen civilians who are still held hostage on both sides of the border. Aga said troops from the two countries will protect merchants, castle ranchers and farmers who rebels attack to gain supplies. He said the joint force will also search for and seize weapons the rebels are hiding in border towns and villages. The CAR was represented at Friday's meeting by its Minister of National Defense in charge of reconstructing the army, Ramo Claude Bireux, while Cameroon was represented by its Defense Minister Joseph Bessie Asomo. This is not the first time officials have promised to help border communities dealing with rebel incursions to steal and kidnap for ransom. In June, senior security and state officials from the two countries agreed to jointly fight armed CAR rebels. They said we are fleeing intense fighting and infiltrating refugee camps in Cameroon. Civilians in border towns and villages say there have been isolated military incursions in bushes suspected to be rebel hideouts. Civilians say each time government troops leave, rebels return and torture people suspected of collaborating with the military. Cameroon and CAR defense ministers ask civilians to help by alerting local administrative authorities and government troops of the presence of rebels in border towns and villages. The defense ministers come in the 23 election. You know, quite often we forget what the media can do for democracy. It is the media that will provide the information, authentic information, even education, voter education, voter registration, how to cast your vote. And the world will be looking up to the media to guide them and right. But like I said in there, no other group of people, apart from media people, professionals, have the capacity to gather and package and disseminate the quality and quantity of information required to make democracy work. To remove the media, democracy crumbles. People know this all the time. Sometimes we forget as media people. Nigeria's general election in 2023 is less than a month. It's about six months from now. Recently, they they will shift their port operation to Tanzania, leaving just Rwanda and Burundi still fully dependent on the port of Mombasa. Duncan Ochenna, a Nairobi based economist, says the most is they are in a difficult situation as they feel the pinch of competition from the regional ports in Dar es Salaam and now Djibouti. They really want to believe that the exit of South Sudan from the a recent last program for projects we have a special report on that time the same that with Uganda having to keep up its the it's uh it wasn't the report of supporting China's position, nor has it staked out a position critical of China. Analysts for DOA South Africa, seen as the continent's leading democracy, consistently mostly remain silent on the issue. Forbes Van Staden, a China African at the South African Institute of International Affairs, says China's economic self is such that countries on the continent simply don't want to pick a fight over Xinjiang, which to many seems so far away. In previous attempts by Western countries to try and raise the legal issue internationally, we've seen most African countries side with China. This includes many Muslim majority countries, and it also includes many Muslim majority countries in other parts of the world. Analysts say many African nations are unwilling to alienate China, which has been a major source of loans for infrastructure projects throughout the continent as part of Beijing's Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative. Forces say that investments have helped with economic development and job growth, particularly the world will worry about the amount of debt African nations owe China. China has also attempted to convince African nations of its position on...